Hi, welcome to Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Photoshop. I'm using 221, same could be for 220, 219, etc. And what I'm going to do, dual brushes. I'm just going to run through dual brushes. Now I've created some shapes and I've just defined them as brushes. Simply just go over here and select and then go to edit and define brush preset. And the reason I'm doing that is I want some brushes to demonstrate the dual brush. And they're stored obviously when I'm just going to deselect that, go over here to the brush tool, and then you can see the panel here. And you can see there's all the various designs that I've added. There's also, of course, hundreds of other brushes, thousands of brushes you can use in dual brushes. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to select the most basic of brushes, something like 25 there. I'm just going to, it's one of the just very standard, sort of blurry general use brushes. And you can just see that design there. Or you can modify it using dual brushes. Now you can find window, brush settings, and brushes. I think brush settings is going to be the key one here. So what you can do, you can use, of course, the same brush as in here, as here as well in the thing. So just dual brush, and you can see you've got about 30 there. You've got multiply. So I'm just going to go with multipliers first. Select the brush there, and that's all you need to do. Just simply select it from this long list of different dabs or designs or tips that you've got there. There's a couple of options. You've got mode, multiply, darken, overlay, color dodge, etc. Color burn, linear burn, hard mix, and linear height. I'm just gonna quickly resize. And you can see as I resize that, you can see straight away that this original design, if I deselect that, you can see the original dual brush, it just, it modifies, it just shrinks it down. This, this is one trouble with showing, demonstrating the dual brush. There's literally so many combinations that you can make. Literally, you've got millions of combinations of dual brushes. So what you can do, you can change the size, you can also change the spacing. So as soon as you change the spacing, you can see what happens. This is for the dual brush. You've got these, see the dots. Now, obviously, I could apply it over here as well. That's perfect reasonable. But what you can also do is you've got scattering. So as soon as you scattering, you can see that, and you can reduce that down. So you can see those are the dots all through. That's really radically changed very quickly. So you just apply it like that, compared with if you just apply it without the dual brush, just apply it like that. So you can see you can really quite change very radically just with the, the same brush. And of course, you've got other options there, both axes as well. Also count, which really makes it a lot darker. But personally, just leave it like that. If you, unfortunately, there's no dynamics. It'd be really great if there was some dynamics. Also, it'd be brilliant if there was sort of a, a color dynamics as well. So you could actually change within that structure. Sadly, you can't. There's also the flip. You know what? It, it's, that is very subtle effect. There is a very subtle effect. Maybe in certain circumstances, it's more dramatic. But to be honest, I've yet to find one where I've, if I click it, that it actually changes much more than that. Hmm, maybe it does more than that. Well, I've created these shapes, so let's just use those now. So you can see how it varies. So this is dual brush, select there, and you can see now you've got this. This is added to this, it's exactly the same brush as before. I haven't changed it, I've got the squares. Now the squares, what I can do, I can reduce them down. And you can see then you've got the squares running through and it's not extending beyond. The key thing here is the scatter. So if you reduce the scatter down, you actually get a nice rough design there. Size, you can see the roughness going all the way through. So it's great for creating all kinds of different brushes. And also there, you end up with these blocks running through it. And you can reduce the size down, scattering a whole range of different designs. And now, of course, what happens, just go to brush tip, the actual brush, the actual brush of the whole thing. If you reduce that size, you can see what happens. You end up, you end up losing, obviously, all that outside. So if you push that up, you can see it. So it's quite a dramatic effect just simply by doing that. So you can create a nice line. So this, you know, just a nice line one with little gaps. Now, I have to say the preview doesn't always match the end result because you can see there, it's just a, obviously an example. You can see that design there, and you can. That's a pity there's not a more. 
So a random feature would be really great. Photoshop, for some weird reason, never seems to introduce those sort of things, but a randomizer would be so useful in this circumstances. So you just click there, click there, click there, and it would just run through all these possible settings. And then you could just, because obviously you can go through these, but you have to manually go through them and explore and think, you know what? So you can see the change there. Now let's go and change another one. So just going to go with this brush. So that's the see, very, just a circle, just a basic circle. And again, you can reduce that down. And you've got scattering as well. So you can see then you've got all the circles all just scattering out. But it doesn't go beyond that limit of the brush. And you can change the spacing, you can make them all crunched up closer, obviously. Does that work the exact same way as with the normal spacing? And count, you can basically close the whole lot off. It becomes one solid cut. Now, I haven't gone through the other ones either. So you've got mode, darken. Now some quite dramatic change. You've got quite a difference there. Overlay, color dodge. That's quite a dramatic change. So that again can be there. Color burn. Linear burn. Hard mix. And linear height. Now you can also use these on layers. So if you go to layer a new layer, so you just go there and you can apply, you can create some very unusual, like very strange brush designs using, especially linear height. I always find linear height is quite a good one. So you can select there and you can change the size and you can see, look, you've got actually, you've got it going the opposite. You've got like the negative going through this, an erasing effect. So if you go up to say hard mix, you can see the original design. Well, now linear height, you've got that. You can see those the stars there are raising. Obviously, you've got that initial bar that's all the way through it. And if I just go up to brush shapes, can reduce that down. So you can see there's a whole range of different designs, and that will crunch in like that. And of course, you can always move that around as well vary it again. So it's literally an infinite amount of possible combinations just by using this. You can, scattering is always quite good, it always compresses it in. So if you go to scattering, reduce it down, you end up with basically the same brush, the, the original default brush. The scattering out like that, count, you can see the count just basically now becomes like a solid all the way around. And of course you can still always Let's just go up there. You've always still got blending modes here as well. So you can always go up to this bit, different. You can create some very weird and wonderful combinations. And that maybe go for, let's go for red. And so on, so on. Very quick and easy using this weird thing. Now it's just a pity this preview. Unfortunately, you can't expand, you can't make it bigger, so it would be nice to, however, let's go to the next one. So you've got, that's the star one. The star one's quite good for running through. So you can see a whole range of different designs. Space in there, you can just see there, and again, scattering, that's the key one. I think scattering's pretty useful, and spacing. Reduce that down. Now let's go for the last one. And you can see that one is there, the line one. You can see you can get a very scratchy edge design there as well. It's it all going through there. Spacing again, change that, scattering. So you've got a nice scratchy line edged all the way around. Now, of course, as with before, you can go to hard mix and you can see it gets the opposite. So you end up with the opposite effect, which you can just apply again. Okay, let's go for green now. So you can get a real garish. Or use other blending modes, of course, or just go back to normal and just apply it like that. And again, you can always add it to another layer and then go for linear burn. And that one you can create, look at that, it's a lovely, nice, scratchy design there. Actually, I'm just going to clear this whole lot down. So edit and fill so you can see it a bit better than that. And you've got that design. And that's just from if you switch off the dual brush, let's just Stop that, you've got that design. Instead, you've got this design. And again, you can change the count. So you've obviously got less 
It's like a scratchy design. And you can change. It's actually weird. There seems to be some, it really just changes. Just slightest change. It's very odd the way it does it. I'm not certain how it works now. You can see it does alter it. It's got very discreet sort of changes there. Scatter both ways and you can change that. And Again, if you put the scatter down, you will get it more crunched up. But if you want it to nicely scatter like that, I think that one's quite a nice one, just for creating a very nice sort of scattering design. However, let's get on to the last one, this one. And you've got this brush. And again, you've got these angles. Like I say, literally, and then you've got these ones. I've got a lot of sort of like splatter ones there. And you can change and vary all these settings. So you can create a nice sort of dot design there. A line one there. And then every time you go and change the brush, you will probably have to tweak these settings because, of course, it's just, you can see that one's got a nice line. You can change that and you can see all these lines again. I'll do that so you can see it a bit better. And again, so that's a dual brush. I think it's really a great feature. In many ways, I think it's a pity that they didn't extend it to actually like in the, the layer styles. So you go into layer style, so layer style, and oh, of course you can't access that. So if I go for layer, well, let's not do that. Layer styles, if you go into that, you can add multiple like drop shadows, multiple overlays of gradients and things. It's a pity that you couldn't add multiple, little plus sign there as well. Little plus, so you could have added multiple brushes on top of each other, wouldn't they? Just having one, it's nice, but it would have been nice if they extended it a bit. Dual brush is definitely one that you could imagine three or four or five additional brushes on top of each other. A sub brush feature, like in Infinity Photo, is it comes to mind. So, well, anyway, that's a run through of the dual brush. I'm certain there's many other things you can do with dual brushes. Dual brushes, I think, are just a brilliant way of extending just your, uh, any gun, and I've just been using one brush. So I could actually just go to, I've just, let's go to another one. Let's just, just finish off with selecting, just select one of these ones. That's the brush, and you can see there you've got another design. So again, go down to dual brush again, select the line, change these settings, spacing, and now that's filled with this nice line like that, color dodge. We'll run through linear height. And again, sometimes you sometimes you go to set things just it's too high or it just will not respond. Spacing's wrong, space brush shape. See the line there, dual brush. Um, that obviously has a little effect on it, just cannot see it. But it's like another one, and you can see that does modify it. So maybe the star ones. Sometimes you'll have find that some brushes do not seem to have really much of an impact. You can just see that pulse through there, the count. You can see that design there, just modifying again. And this is the case with all of these things, spacing, scattering, just modify these things and just run through. That's why a randomizer would be really great. But it's, I think it's, it would demonstrate very quickly the sort of way to go when you're running through these. Again, select that one. Brush tip, side, and so and so. Lots and lots of dots running through that. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always have new tutorials all the time about Photoshop, Illustrator, and many others. Also, if you've got any questions, always great to hear. Please put some comments. There might be some issues, problems that you've found with my things. Maybe I went too quite quick. Maybe I didn't explain something well. Please let me know in the comments. A dislike or like, always appreciated. Also, please check out the Graphic Extras website. Always had new tutorials on that about dual brushes, about textures, color dynamics, and actually quite a few other ones as well of these features with brushes. Thank you much.